is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at one 927 6648 Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Glad to have you back here on TFNN.com. And let's see here, checking things out, trying to get uh, some... Screen share going on. There we go. Got that. Put it on up there. You ought to be able to see my screen right now. All right. Let's check out where the markets are at. We got the S&P up 12.5. We got the Russell up 7.8. NASDAQ currently up 37. And the Dow is up 96 points. We'll get on over at Copper. Copper is currently down 1%. Almost 1 and a quarter percent. On the day, we got gold is up 2.8 points right now. We'll get on over at silver. Silver is down about half percent. We got natural gas. Looking at our energy sector, natural gas is flying down, down 3% on the day. Massive move there in natural gas. Got oil currently uh, down just a few cents uh, right now, So, but uh, it's definitely had plenty of movement going on with the inventory reports. We'll uh, pull that up and look at it. Checking out corn. Corn is currently flat on the day. We got soybeans down about 11 points right now. And we got pound dollar down 113 pips. So uh, working beautifully off the news trade we uh, talked about yesterday. Worked out really well. We got the euro dollar flat. Worked out well for other trades as well. So we'll go in and we'll walk through those. Check it out the euro pound. Euro pound is currently up 56 pips. It's actually a pretty big move for the euro pound. You don't usually see that kind of uh, moving on it. We got the dollar CAD is currently flat. Dollar franc down two pips. And the pound yen up 24 pips on the day. With the euro yen up 29. The Aussie yen up 46. And that's your market midday lunch market wrap right there. Okay, so let's go in. We had a few new trades that we were going over yesterday. Let me uh, go ahead and just open those on up for you. And there we go. Let's talk about them, what we had going on. We had the unemployment and everything. I said, hey, you know what? There's not a lot of moves that we go in for straddles nowadays, but this is one of those that we do dive in and um, expect to actually get a nice big move on. So what I'd like to do is go through that trade with you and help you understand it because I saw a couple traders. Uh, they sent me some notes, and you know they did well on the trade, so I got some um, you know, traders that you know, made some money on the trades. Some did the binary, some did the spread. Uh, one of them said, though, they did the binary because they didn't really understand how to choose the spreads for a straddle. And so I want to make sure that you do understand how to choose a spread for a straddle. We don't do a lot of straddles. And uh, also, of course, how to even choose them for the iron condors. But focus, you know, right now mainly just on the straddles just because that was, you know, one of the – we don't do those that often and we can, uh, you know, sort of keep it on one main topic. And so a straddle is when I'm referring to – straddles, I'm referring to spreads. Uh, when referring to strangles, I'm referring to binaries. The reason is because you have two different strike prices. Okay? So with two different strike prices, that'd be a strangle because it's like putting your hands around somebody's neck, strangling them. Okay? One hand on each side in two different places. Okay? So since it's around, it, it's a strangle. So straddle, you know, it's you're straddling the fence or whatever, you know, like you're right on top of it, okay? And so it's the exact same strike there. And uh, so you have the same floor and ceiling on a straddle. And just to show you visually, let me open up the scanners here, and we'll walk through that a little bit for you, okay? So right up here, if we go in and, uh, you know, go over what it is on a strangle here. And, you know, somebody was doing a strangle on, say, the pound. 
then it would have to be a, you know an upper strike and a lower strike. So they'd be going in and choosing like one up here and you say one down here. Okay? And that would be a strangle. It's two different strikes, like buying a 6710, selling a 6680. And you have to make sure your risk is pretty low. You want to combine risk of about $25 or less on those trades because you want to take profit when it hits the strike. When you look at that, now this is on binaries, you have to actually expect it to move that far. So you have to look at what the pricing is and go, can I pull this off for you know, less than about $25? And if I do that, uh, i got to take profit when it hits it. And do I expect it to move far enough in either direction or whatever our expected move is for it actually to take place? So if I'm saying do a straddle for you know 40 ticks, that probably means that we're expecting about a you know 60 to 80 tick move on a market, and um, so that would be a possibility for you. But that's not a straddle; that's a strangle. To do a straddle, you're going to go over to the spread scanner, and you'll choose your instrument such as the pound dollar. Okay, so we'll turn all the other ones off here. And then reset all your filters just to make it really clean. Let's go and let's say when a one to one risk reward ratio. And then you go, okay, so I got all those, and now you have all the strikes coming up. And so we can we can get rid of some stuff. The main thing is, you know, if we're straddling the news, we want to make sure that say, you know, the straddle actually happens after the news. It expires after the news report is over. But um, so if we go over here, we'll get this one and let's see if that's the right one. There we go. Okay, so it expires like in 106 minutes. And then we'll go up here and we'll look at a buy side that has the same floor as the sell has a ceiling. So we want the ceiling and the floor to line up. So 6690, we go over here. Where is a 6690? There it is. Notice again, let me zoom in on this so you really understand what I'm saying when I say floor and ceiling. 6690, that's the floor of the spread on the bot spread. So when you buy a spread, the floor is below you, the ceiling is above you, okay? And the same thing, when you sell a spread, the floor is below you, the ceiling is above you. Really simple. We want those numbers to match. We want the ceiling and the floor of the two different spreads, so the ceiling of the sold spread to match the floor of the bot spread. So they're both at 6690. This is how the graph looks. So if we go right over here, look at this, you'll actually see that they come together right there. And to really zoom in on it for you, right here, this is the live market price, that little different shading in the gray. That's the live market price. And this is the market. If the market goes up, if the market goes down, okay? Well, what happens if the market goes up? Here's your profit and loss, okay? What happens if the market goes down? Here's your profit and loss. Notice how we make money if the market goes up, we make money if the market goes down. See the P&L, price going up, price going down from where it is right now. So the ceiling of the sold spread, the top of the sold spread, has the, is the exact same as the floor of the bot spread. Okay? So that's a straddle right there. Basically, you have the exact same, that, that strike, that floor ceiling strike match. Now, obviously, you have a higher ceiling on the bot spread because you you know you bought one with the floor right there. So our ceiling up there is you make money up to sixty eight forty. That's plenty that's plenty of distance. It's 150 ticks. Okay, we don't even expect it to move that far. And then you can make money down to sixty five forty. Again it's 150 ticks lower. We don't expect it to move that far. That is a straddle. Okay? And then when we look at the risk, look at the risk over here. It has like 890 and 790. Now, I understand I actually calculate in the fees, the 90 cents. Now, that's if you're doing a single contract, it goes down. If you're doing you know more than 10, your fees get cheaper because what happens is it caps at 9 bucks a contract. So if I did 100 of these and I sold 100 of these, then I paid 9 bucks on this one and 9 bucks on this one. Okay, so it'll be like 9 cents instead of 90 cents. So your fees do go down. But I show just based on a single contract. That's what a lot of new traders are trading on. And so basically we got right here combined risk of, you know, approximately 14 to, you know, $16 if you're adding in fees. So $7.90 that is fees included. That's a perfectly balanced straddle. So if we just say if we just add in the fees, we'll say $16 on the trade. That's our risk on the trade. And so when I say a maximum risk of 40 bucks, well, 8 plus 8 is less than 40. Therefore, 
I can put on a straddle for less than $40 risk. Now, I may give or take a few dollars, okay? Don't go, like, so, like, stringent that, oh, it was 42 so I can't do the trade. You know what I mean? you gotta, you got to have a little wiggle room in there. I'm basically saying max profit, but yeah, if it's $42, am I going to totally throw the trade out the window? No, okay? Now, I'm still only going to go for a $40 profit, so I'm only going to try to make 38 So uh, I don't necessarily need to get that one-to-one -one if I go over it, okay? But the main thing is you're looking for trying to find a straddle, that expires after the expiration or after the news announcement is released. So let's say if we had a news announcement at 2 o'clock, this expires at 3. That's awesome. Last night, we're okay. Get in around somewhere between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Make sure you choose a 7 a.m. expiration because the announcement was coming out you know, a little earlier in the morning. Let's see here. I'll show you that. It's coming out at 4.30. And then we also had like 5.30. We had Governor Carney speaking, the Bank of England inflation report. Well, we got a lot of British news coming out. And based on the historical stats, this is one of the news movements that actually does consistently move the market. And so that's what we're looking for. Uh, we want something that is going to consistently move the market for us. Um, and once you've chosen that, then you'll simply buy one. You'll buy this one, and you'll sell this one. And, um, and another important point, you'll notice that the risk and reward are balanced. That's because we're right at the where the market is. Our floor and ceiling are basically trading right where the market's trading. So that obviously makes that a little bit easier on you as a trader uh, whenever they do line up like that. And a lot of times that's why I'll hop in at 11 because I know that at 11 o'clock, I mean, they set the thing like five, ten minutes before um, the 11 o'clock starts trading, the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So right before it starts trading, they actually set those strikes. The longer I wait, the more that the market can move around, the harder it can be to find a balanced um, you know, spread like this where you have the balanced risk reward. I still take them when they're not balanced. So that's not like an abnormal thing. I'll still do that. Anyway, so if we go over and we look at um, the pound dollar, and let me bring that up over here. Bring this up like right here like this. And you might be able to guess uh, where the news came out last night. <laughs> just by looking at this chart here. And so the market's dropping on down. We go out the announcements right here at 425, 430. So there's like right where the market is. We got it at what, 68.05. And, I mean, it just flies down quickly and uh, works out for an excellent profit. It actually keeps trending down into the day. But uh, we'll talk about it more when we get back. Stay right there. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Folks, we're going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour, and we're checking out the pound dollar going into that and uh, the movement that happened on it, and we're talking about the straddles and uh, the straddle play I called out yesterday, and so what I wanted to look at is, you know, we had the market right at like 68.05 or so last night, so yeah, 68.05, and it drops on down by 7 o'clock, we're getting a uh, low down here of around 66.88. So minus 6688. It's a 117 pip move. So a um, solid move. We were happy with 80 pips, and we got way more than that. So uh, you know, obviously you love it when a plan comes together, right? So uh, a little Murdoch from 18 there, and um, or Hannibal, I guess. But um, <laughs> anyways, looking right over here, we got the uh, buy and the sell side. We put those two together. We have usually about a 40 dollar risk on the trade. And I want to say we had uh, one trader sent over to me a uh, you know a picture of one of the trades they put on this morning. On that, let me see if I can get that one. Um, and right over here, we'll go in and pull up the specific trade. Right there it is. Okay. So I can go in. He sent this one over. And this one to show, you know, one of the, uh, this came from um, Yogi here. And uh, smaller trade for him. I know he does a lot of big trades, but they're on like 10 contracts on both sides. And he went in and uh, put the trade in and got the 68 by 68. So remember, we were about 68.04, so it's pretty much right on target with it. And... Um, Let's see. So when he uh, sold this one, 67.81, he had about 19 ticks of risk on that side. He bought this one at 68.24. 
get about 24 ticks, so you put those together, you're going to get about $42, $43. So like I said, give or take a few bucks. So he got the trade on, put it in there, and um, let's see, not sure exactly what price he got out at, but I mean, if he held the trade, then he really cleaned up. Um, if he got out at one-to-one, -one, obviously no problem there. The market definitely moved far enough for that to take place. So hopefully you understand that, I mean, a straddle is simply buying the upper spread, selling the up lower spread, and your risk reward, if you're using the scanner, is going to look like this. If it goes up, you make money. If it goes down, you make money. That's the exact same floor and ceiling you'll notice they touch right there, okay? So same floor on the bot spread, same ceiling on the sold spread, and combine the two risk and uh, make sure it's pretty much, you know, less than the max risk we define. And again, give or take a few bucks. Um, that's all there is to it. And then what you want to do is like, well, what is my take profit? Well, for a one-to-one, -one, and this is where people get all confused, okay? You got to remember one side's going to lose, okay? Like, I mean, now may come back. I mean, you may make money on both sides, but you're not really counting on that. Um, so, how do you handle that? What do you do? Let's say we have $20 risk on one side. We have $20 risk on the other side. So $40 risk. We're expecting one side to lose 20 bucks, right? Because if the market goes down, you know, if we just pull up that same chart on the pound dollar over here, the market were to just go down like it did. Okay, it actually flew up first and ran down really fast. And it flew up about, I mean, it got a nice move on up. So depending upon, I guess, where you're at. But uh, it flew up about 60 pips. That's a massive up move right there, actually, off of that. And, uh, well, 45 pips. Okay. So, let's say you have $20 risk on both sides. And let's just say it goes straight down, doesn't come back up afterwards, like this trade right here. Then the $20 on the bot side is going to lose. And you risk $40 on the trade. Okay, so... It's really not hard to you know put together, but to make it really simple, I got 20 up here. I got 20 down here, which means that I'm trying to do what I'm trying to make. If I want to do a one to one, I'm going to make at least 40 bucks. Well, since the market went down, I'm going to lose 20 dollars on this side. Okay, but I want to net. Forty dollars. So I need to make forty bucks on the one I sold. But I actually, if I make forty and I lost twenty, I only I only walk away with twenty dollars in my pocket. Okay. So again, if I make forty dollars on the sold one and I lose twenty dollars in the bought one, then I only walk away with twenty bucks. So I actually need to make sixty on the sold one to cover the twenty lost on the bought one and still walk away with forty dollars. So I need to make sixty bucks. Stare there. We'll talk more about this when we get back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full-month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. 
and he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So just walking through uh, each uh, piece of this for you step by step. And let's see what we got going on over here. Um, all right, so what I was walking through is wanting to really make sure that you understood um, the straddle and understood how it worked uh, and where the take profit was because that's the way where people get tripped up. And it's not as hard as people make it out to be. So if we have, let's say, a forty-dollar max risk on the trade, we don't want we went we want to make forty dollars. Maybe at a forty-three-dollar max risk, I'm probably still going to go for forty dollars if that was the trade plan. Okay, but so you got a forty-dollar risk on the trade, and let's say the upper side had a twenty-dollar risk. The lower side has to make sixty bucks to account for the twenty-dollar loss on the upper spread losing. So that way you walk away with 40 bucks in your pocket because you get to keep the 20 from the lower one that you had, but you're going to lose 20 from the upper one. You need to keep it, meaning not make it, but just you know, get your money back. But you're going to lose the 20 bucks you put up for the upper spread you bought. With that in mind, now I got to make $40 and another 20 to cover the bot spread. So I need to make $60, 60 pips on the trade. Well, where do I make 60 pips at? I got to buy it back 60 pips lower than where I sold the spread. Okay? So, if I was looking over here at this uh, trade example that a trader sent in to me that they did, and they went in and they sold 
the 6500 to 6800 spread at 6781 and they had about $40 risk on the trade. They want to buy it back $40 lower than where they sold it. So they sold it at 6781. They want to buy it back at 6721. So when it came down here and hit 6721, boom, they're out of the trade. Okay? About 15 minutes after the release came out. That's where they want to be hopping out of the trade. Okay? So they can walk away with $40. Now, if we want to get really specific, like right into this exact trade and go, okay, well, technically they bought the 6800 to 17.1 for 68.24. So they had $24 of risk there. So we got 24 bucks of risk. So we'll just add it all up. We got $24 of risk on one side. We got. You know, nineteen dollars risk on the other side because they sold the sixty-five to sixty-eight for sixty-seven eighty-one. All I do is I take sixty-eight hundred minus sixty-seven eighty-one. That's nineteen. So that's how I know it's nineteen ticks of risk because you can't lose more when you sell a spread above the ceiling. So if I sell sixty-seven eighty-one, it goes high as it wants to above sixty-eight hundred. I won't lose more than nineteen ticks. Okay. So on the bought one, if I bought at 68.24, I can't lose lower than the floor when I buy. So 6800, so 68.24 minus 6800 is 24 ticks. So I got $24 risk on the bought one. I got $19 risk on the sold one. So again, I take that 19 plus 24. I got $43 total risk on the trade. Well, I need to make, basically, I said I want to make $40 on this trade. So let's just say we're going to go for the flat 40. We're going to keep it simple. But to do that, i got to look at it to have a little bit of imbalance because I had 19 by 24, right? So I need to make $24 plus, we'll say, $40. I need to make $64. So to be at a one-to-one, -one, on the on the sold side, I'd make 64 bucks to cover the $24 on the bought side. So if I sold for $67.81 minus 64, I need to buy back at $67.17. Now, on the bought side... If the sold side were to lose the 19 bucks, then 40 really plus 19. Okay, so 59 pips. So where did I buy it? I bought at 68.24. Add in on here 59 pips, 68.83. So if the market was to go up to 68.83, I hop out. I'll cover my $19 risk on my sold one, and I'll keep $40 in my pocket because I'll make $59 in the trade to cover the 19. So $40 is left out of the $59 I made, and I lost the 19 on the sold. If the market flies down, then I'm going to buy it back. I'm going to buy back the sold one at 67.17 because I'm going to lose the 24 bucks on the bought one, but I'm buying it back basically 64 pips lower. That'll cover the $24 on the bought one and put $40 in my pocket. And so I just need the market to move basically to one of those two price levels. It does shoot up quite a bit. It shoots up to 68.45, and sometimes, I mean, it didn't happen on this one. Sometimes, I mean, it will pop up, it'll hit one, and it'll go down and hit the other. You hit double profit. That is awesome when that happens. Didn't happen here. It just shot straight down. So the bought one lost. The sold one was profitable enough to cover the long, the bought one, and put 40 bucks in your pocket, and that is a straddle, okay? That's the trade that we're shooting for. Uh, and it worked out perfectly. It was exactly what the entire plan was for yesterday and how to do the trade. And uh, market's just been hanging out way down here ever since then. Um, other things I'll look at, I'll, you know, I'll tie in key deviation levels. Uh, so we can go over here and we put the deviation levels up for you. And so you can go down and look at you know, pound dollar, pound dollar, what do we got on the market moving on down. And, you know, we are basically looking to take profit right here around 67, you know, 20 or so. Go, well, is that tied into a level? And 67.40, 67.14. So we're actually getting down to, you know, pretty low, pretty big move. But uh, one deviation itself was at 67.65. So right up here was like one deviation move. And we were expecting a much larger move just because of the way this report comes out. It came out, it moved down, it basically hit our take profit within 15 minutes. And um, this is a very fast move, like right there. By that point, we'd already had our take profit. But I'm, I'm going to be mindful of those levels. If I see it start slowing down, I may want to take my profit a little bit early 
Or if my profit's just on the other side of a deviation level, you know, let's say it's five ticks below it, I may go in and take it a few ticks above it because I'll see it just, you'll see it over and over again just bounce right off of deviations and it's just not worth holding it to see what happens. Uh, we haven't quite made it to a three deviation level today. It was a big move though. We moved on to, all the way down past um, two deviations on the day. So big move right there on the pound dollar. Um, and let's see, what else do we got? We had a couple other trades as well that I uh, went through. And so we can pull those up real quick and look at them. And uh, step by step over here, pull it up, and we'll look at... We had we had uh, pound unemployment uh, change. That was the straddle for yesterday. We had a couple of be aware events. We had the core retail sales come out this morning. And on that, we were looking at the euro dollar. We were looking for the euro dollar to be somewhat flat. Let's see uh, how that worked out um, in the morning when all was said and done. We got we were looking at entry at around eight o'clock. So right here, uh, sixty four eleven, and at ten o'clock, we went down to. What was our move at 10 o'clock? 63, basically 63.80 for a settlement there. 60, uh, 33.80, I'm sorry. 33.80. And from, if we got in right here, 34.08. So about 28 pips. We were expecting a move of 30 pips or less. We basically got about a 30 pip move. That was right near a break even trade. Probably made a couple bucks on that trade. So nothing fantastic. Um, if you were able to get the fill for the quantity. And I said we really wanted to stick to that 30 pips on that trade. So I'm glad we did. Um, we can go over and we can also look at the... We have a couple more trades tonight. Uh, we have some earning releases coming out. We got Cisco coming out. So uh, make sure we're that. That's going to come out at 4.05 today. And um, right there in the NASDAQ. So CSCO. Um, and let's see here. We got... Tonight we got... The end, uh, core machinery orders. We got the Aussie inflation report coming out to be aware of at 9 o'clock. We got the Frank PPI, which you can trade this evening. Um, that one's going to be an iron condor. going to be the opposite of what we talked about today on the straddles. And that's where we're going to go in, and we're going to do um, an 11 o'clock entry no later than 3 for a 7 a.m. expiration for a $35 minimum. Instead of maximum risk, it's going to be a minimum profit on the trade. And we also have a Euro CPI coming out as well. We're going to do a very, basically the same entry, okay? Um, and then tomorrow morning we'll have the unemployment claims. So we can have an iron condor. Uh, watch the spike striker as well off of that. And we'll have the US PPI news coming out. Um, we can do basically the same trade to what we did this morning on retail sales, going for 8 to 10, except for it's really, really a small move. We're only looking for a $20 minimum profit on that trade. And that's a lot easier fill there. Then, of course, we'll have natural gas. Uh, don't forget on natural gas, you need to add to your list to be uh, checking out looking for Spike Striker. Now, we can go over to oil. And on oil here, let me pull that up. And we can see we got some nice, nice movements right off of it. And I wanted to see if I could find one other set up. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. And we'll just look at it on oil from earlier today. And, okay, so uh, on the oil trade from earlier, I posted, I had a couple charts that I'd captured, and I wanted to see if I could show them to you, and right over here, it's taking a little longer than I'd want for it to load up, but uh, we had some nice moves, uh, movement stayed within the expected range, here we go, so here's one trade from some trade, traders I was talking to earlier, we had a nice uh, short um, spike strike right there in the money. Um, over here, we had a long uh, spike striker. If, if it was in the money, um, when it fired off, meaning like right here at the lows here for the in the money, would have worked out well. Uh, again, if it's ever close, you want to hop out on those trades, but it worked out really well. And it's just a matter of making sure you're picking that right strike because you want that you know right there where the lower the high was because that's where you don't expect it to go back to um, until after the market's had its time to move around. But looking at the expected move, we had a perfect expected movement um, on the high to low, right off of the oil inventory. Right as we hit that perfect expected move, it pulled on back up. So it did exactly as we thought it would and uh, popped on back around there. 
and then uh, pretty quiet in the hour after, and then we had, again, a perfect expected move, and it pulled on back right in the most recent 1 o'clock hour um, on oil. So some good moves just on the oil inventory report. I want to cover that with you. And with the oil inventory knocked out, uh, what else do we have left that I want to make sure you uh, have on your trading plan for today, tomorrow? Um, so you've got that Frank PPI, Euro CPI, unemployment claims, PPI, natural gas coming up tomorrow. So same type trade setup as oil. And that's really uh, the, the main trades of the week, sort of a quiet week overall. Uh, as far as what's in store for us next week, we can um, hop through on here real quick and just sort of, you know, go through it. Uh, let's see what we got. And if I can hit the right buttons here. There we go. Um, all right, so let's see what we got coming up next week. We got any big, uh, okay, we got U.S. Core CPI. That'll be good. Pound CPI. We're going to have uh, facility votes. That's okay. Now, meeting minutes, it's not the same as interest rates, so don't get too excited about it. Um, we'll go in, either the market's really nervous about what they're going to do with those interest rates. Uh, looking at, uh, we got mortgage approvals, retail sales, existing home sales, uh, lots of reports on Canada, so we'll have a nice big Canadian trade coming up most likely next Friday. So sort of a quiet uh, news week next week as well. So enjoy uh, the movement, be a little bit less uh, news controlled, but uh, ought to still be plenty of movement for you to take advantage of. Just make sure you know how to take advantage of those swings, um, because either you're going to get really smooth trends or... Um, you know, you'll get uh, just nice oscillations right within expected ranges. So, one of the two. That will wrap up our news report for next week. I wanted to see if I could pull up, potentially. I'm having a little issue on closing one thing out, but do this. I'm going to close that workspace. And then we'll pull it on back up. And uh, But if you haven't got... I know some of you are sort of, you know, you're, like you're curious about this new stuff. You you want to learn how to trade this. This is, I mean, I've traded, I've tried in every way possible I can to trade the news um, for years. And just about gave up on it until I came across Nadex, trading on Nadex. And if you want to learn how to do this, the first step is just go over uh, to Nadex's website. Click on tfnn.com. Click on the Nadex banner on the right side of the page. And then under trading, click on demo trading account. Uh, once you go there... Fill in your username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Click Apply for Demo. Okay? So fill in that information. Click Apply for Demo. You'll get an email instantly from them where you can log into your account, and you can start demoing these trades out that I'm talking about. You can start working through them. And then click on Open an Account for Free, and you can fund an account. Now, you don't have to go. You can fund it with $5,000, $10,000, $1,000, or even just $100. Okay? Fund it with any amount. Place just one trade of any size. Okay, it could be a $3 risk trade on a $100 account. Doesn't matter. And then you can get your demo account extended for a year while you're learning how to do this. Okay? Stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, 
I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So I got a question from a trader um, asking, so what happens if the market doesn't hit your profit target? on the straddle. When do you say it's okay, uh, it's not going to hit it, and get out of the trade? Well, on the nighttime ones, there's not really anything you can do unless you're going to get you know, up at 4.30 and watch it for three hours. Personally, I'm not going to do that. So, I put the trade on. I put on my take profits or my stops under an iron condor with the stop triggers. And I go to sleep. And either I made money or it didn't the next morning. I've done them enough, I don't mind putting them on and walking away. Okay? You might. I don't know. So, for me, I just I put them out there and let them take care of themselves. And sometimes it doesn't work out. Most of the time, they work out really well. This one, I mean, you, know, you would have made more money if you didn't manage the trade. Um, it's really easy to overthink these trades. Now, during the day, um, and it, it really was a big deal before when I did a lot of straddles, that I had to really focus on this. Because uh, I used to try to straddle everything under the sun. I mean, if it had, like, red on Forex Factory, man, I was I was straddling it. And uh, that was obviously me learning the process of doing it correctly. But, um, you know, over time I learned what should I straddle and what should I condor. And it doesn't mean I'm always right, of course, but it, I've, I put the probability, the stats in my favor. 
and the majority of the time we are spot on. And, you know, if you've watched the show for any length of time, you know that I call them spot on time after time after time. And that's just using, it's not magic, it's just going through and doing my research, okay? So it's just a lot of research. And um, so I don't have to call it before because on the straddle, the really tough part is it goes up, it doesn't go far enough, doesn't even take profit and turns around and you could end up losing on the trade. Now that's why I don't like using binaries for strangles. Because if you don't hit the take profit, it's a total loss. Okay, on a binary strangle. Because I mean if it expires out of the money, it's you lose everything. On a straddle, you know, if it went up, you know, to say twenty pips and you bought, you know, on the two sides, well, I mean you got twenty dollars back out of your forty dollars you put up. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're doing you put up four hundred or four thousand, it starts adding up. If it moves up just forty pips, you didn't make anything. And let's say it expires like right at forty pips there, then you broke even on the trade. If it was a thirty, you lost ten. If it went up to fifty, didn't quite head up to eighty, you made ten on the trade. So it's a lot easier to lose less than max. I mean, you have to come right back to the square center for you to lose max. Okay. So rarely are you ever going to lose the maximum risk on the trade when doing a spread straddle on Nadex. Uh, and so that's why I. You know, I like the straddles, the spread straddles over the binary strangles, because you can manage your risk a lot better. Um, and then, but uh, what I found was that was really difficult to take that trade, take that profit off before it came back. And as I got better and better at the iron condors, you'll notice whenever you look at my news plans when I'm going through it, you'll hear iron condor, iron condor, iron condor. Oh, here's a straddle, iron condor, iron condor, iron condor. Oh, here's a straddle. You know, it's like the straddle is the rarity for the week. There may be one or two in a week. Sometimes there's none, but there'll be four, five, ten iron condors that we're doing in a week. And that's because I found that often if I didn't hit that take profit and then it did come back and I did lose and it happened a lot. And so I realized if I just started doing the other side of the trade, started being the guy that was, hey, you want to buy a straddle? I'll sell it to you. Okay? And um, now it goes up and it comes back in and most of those are a lot flatter than one would assume that they'd be. And it'll be profitable on those iron condors. That's why it's so important. And the straddle sounds so amazing, and they're so much easier. And you just buy it, and it's forty dollars risk. And people are gravitated towards them. But what, you know, you don't want to follow the herd, right? And a lot of times, figuring out what's easier and then selling it to the people who want the easier trade is often the better trade for you, the premium collector versus the premium payer. But when it's big moves, you definitely want those straddles, and that's why we have those as well. They're just not near as often as you'd think. All right, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow right here on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.